Well, don't look now, folks, but the Atlanta Fed says that the current quarter, the one we're in right now, the gross domestic product, is 4.8%. A week ago, it was 4%. So with one month ago, this could be the biggest quarter of economic growth this nation has seen in years. I think it's going to happen. But what does it mean for the market? I mean, we've had an amazing earnings season. We've had strong guidance, incredible manufacturing data. And yet, the major indices spinning their wheels. They're locked in a trading range. Let's ask David Nelson. He's back with us along with uh, Melissa Armo, uh, stock swoosh. Uh, Melissa, uh, you kinda, you've you been warning about this uh, on, on your appearances here, saying, hey, you know what? Uh, contain your your uh, your excitement because this market just hasn't been able to break out and is that a yellow flag for you is that some sort of negative sign that it hasn't it's a red flag because again not that we're not strong I think we hold the uptrend but we could be lower and dip down before we get over that area you said a good word breakout that's what I want to see and I will tell you this right now after today's rally after today's positive reports what we must do hundred percent next week we have to do it we are too close not to do it now, if we don't gap up Monday morning and run up and run like crazy, then I don't see how we do it this summer. I think she's got a great point, David. Uh, you know, I mean, I love the resolve and how we climb off the canvas, but we need to break out at some point or you probably will see the market give up. And I think that's because we have this myopic focus on, on the big cap indexes at, at this point. But beneath the surface, there's a lot of action going on. And to her point, she's right. You know, we, we, we don't seem to have the memory from day to day where we do. We just forget everything that happened today, and then there'll be some kind of crisis. Right, on so Monday. Monday morning, forget the jobs report, forget the consumer confidence numbers, forget the Fed beige book. And, we and, could wake and up Monday morning, and, and Europe could announce something because the next election in Europe is likely to be a referendum on the euro, and then we'll panic over that. <laughs> But how long can we have this dual uh, sort of existence where fundamentals exist with wild speculations and, and anxiety, well, a real world, real world things uh, being mitigated by things that may or may not happen? I, I think it, you know, to your point, you know, because everybody looks for price momentum to break out, but underneath the surface, you're seeing fundamental momentum. And I, you know, estimate revisions are very, very powerful force, very, very strong. And in the end, we'll come back to those stocks. So I'm seeing real breakouts and materials and, and other industries that people forget and focus on. I like what you're saying, though, because I, I, I've had a couple of good weeks. <laughs> like, I mean, like so, some of my stock things have done extraordinarily well, and I've been focused on momentum with big tech names, uh, breakouts like uh, uh, Electronic Arts broke out up five bucks a day. These new highs make new highs, make new highs. And then I like the consumer. Lululemon was up big. I wasn't in it. Wish I was. It was on my list of breakouts two weeks ago. I, these are trends where people are making big time money, but they, it's in a handful of stocks. They are, but here's the thing. Tech is leading the way once again today. Amazon made new highs. Netflix made new highs. Facebook and Apple were close to the highs, but I'm telling you, it's not 2016. It's not 2017. Those stocks lifted and then everything went with them. It's yeah, but, 2018. But, but, the Melissa, banks are lagging. Consumer Listen, discretionary and other industries are right there with I them. I know, but I'm telling you, you're not going to have best. a market with new highs without the banks. It's not going to happen. Without the banks? Without the banks. The Goldman banks, is down. Listen, JP Morgan the banks is down. Are, We're not pretty near the strong highs. today. Uh, you know, pretty extraordinary. They're nowhere near the highs. They're like they look like this. Here's the high. Here's where it traded today. Do you think? We, I don't know that we need the banks. Uh, we did well last year without the banks. Banks don't have to be the leading group. sector, yeah. but they, they certainly have to do well. You can't they have a bull have market well. without exactly. without technology and, and yeah. financials. All right. So let's talk about now what are the catalysts? Because now we've gone through the most important data point of any month, the jobs report, and it feels like every time that happens, we go back into a wall and we wait. For the next jobs report. <laughs> we'll start focusing on earnings, you know, at some point in the next month. We'll start be looking. We'll see what analysts, analysts are starting to say. We'll be looking at the estimate revisions. So every data point is important, but this was the big one. I kind of find in, in my, uh, uh, that I, I find that sometimes these major bottoms and sometimes these breakouts can be very stealthy and not have a real catalyst per se. And I'm kind of looking at that. For me, the Dow getting above 25,000, I think, is a huge buy signal. Is that, where, where's your buy? I want to see the 26,000 number, but either way, we get up over 25,000, then we may get right up to 26,000. I want to see a huge, Well, it's huge pretty easy to become it. bullish when everything is at a new high, when you break out to 26,000. I think there's, I think people need to take their focus off the big index, start looking at individual names. And we should point out the Russell 2000 has been a monster, right? I mean, that's a great And the Nasdaq had a good day, too. The a Nasdaq a great proxy for the uh, U.S. economy. All right, thank you both very much. Well, there's a new report out that says federal investigators are looking into whether Andrew McCabe intentionally lied about Hillary Clinton's email server probe. If he did, it could mean prison time for the former FBI deputy. We'll discuss it next.